Hi guys, Crikey, mates. Bird Camera with I'm Bobby Watts. I'm Bobby. After about 20 hours in the air, we made it to Australia. Australia. And as you can see, we have a little weird looking deer here <laughs> with a long tail. Hey, Mike. Oh, get away from here. You're not get, invited. Get. Um, welcome to number 13. What are we going to be talking about this Today, episode? We're going to be talking about lots of good stuff in this episode. We're going to be talking about some uh, mode one versus mode two differences. A lot yeah. of people at home don't know what that's about. Yep. We're going to be Go talking away. about. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about some politicking. You know, some politics. politics. We're going to give you a lot of tips about how how to become a sponsor pilot. Yep. We're going to um, show you what you need to do to yeah get going with a, a sponsorship. Exactly. We're going to show you some bits from the uh, Coffs Harbor Fun Fly. <laughs> <laughs> Coffs Harbor Heli Fest, the largest fun fly in Australia. I'm sure Absolutely. it'll be good. And, and uh, a lot of a lot of good stuff. Oh, yeah. A lot of funny stuff Lots going on. Lots of good on. blokes here, Mike. Yeah, Lots definitely. So, so welcome to number 13 from the Australia Zoo, and I hope you enjoy it. Pretty good cigarettes, man. Yeah, they're Not nice cigarettes. Nice yeah. day outside too. Yeah, it's a very nice day. Very, very nice. I hear a noise though. Yeah, you can hear that too. Yeah. We're at uh, Coffs Harbor in um, Australia. Australia, mate. Australia, mate. Australia, and mate. And this is about halfway, yeah, about halfway on the east coast, of course, for all of you that are not familiar with Australian geography. Oh, yeah. A little bit south of Brisbane, a little bit north, north of, of Sydney. Sydney. Um, this is the largest fun fly in Australia. Yes, There's sir. About by 150 far. pilots, right? Yep. yep. Pretty big. Yeah. That's a good size event, even at home. Yeah. Very good size event. And we're going to talk a little bit about everything here. We're going to show you the event. We're going to uh, ask questions to a bunch of people. Yep. We're going to actually compare Moat 1 versus Moat 2. For all of you that don't know what that is, it's, exactly. just, it's very interesting to see how a lot of these guys in different parts of the world fly different moats and how they learn to fly with the moat that is just so unfamiliar where yeah. the sticks are like just completely screwed up yeah <laughs> oh yeah exactly I mean, exactly um, exactly great people here the weather's been excellent oh it's been long beautiful. trip about 20 hours in the air to uh, get here from the east coast of the united states about well, three days traveling I've, but uh we made it and uh yeah this is this is gonna be great yeah that's gonna be good times good we're gonna times. talk about politics politics we're gonna politics. talk about what it takes to get sponsored <laughs> yes um, sir. what you guys need to do to look out for sponsorships we've been getting a lot of requests about people yep. that want to find out exactly. what it takes to be a sponsored pilot so we'll give you some insight on that exactly um, Introduce you see some really good friends here, some good yeah, people yeah. here. Good it's going to be a definitely a good time episode. No It'll questions time. about it. We're going to go to the zoo. We're going to hang out with some wildlife. Yeah, we're going to go back to the zoo. Yeah. And or we're going to go to the zoo, whatever <laughs> way it works. And we're definitely going to show you some like really interesting animals that you don't see anywhere else in the world, but exactly. here in Australia. Exactly. So let's do it. Sit back and enjoy Australia. He's coming to get you. Hold your hand up. You want some? He's looking for food. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, he just crashed it. <laughs> Alright, so we're here at the uh, Coffs Harbor Fun Fly field. Heli Fest, and uh, yeah. the Heli Fest field. And uh, nice field here. It's freaking awesome. Beautiful scenery here. 
fresh cut grass. They got about six flight stations here. Kangaroos. This is kangaroos. <laughs> lots of kangaroos. Here. Lots of kangaroos like. here. They and, come out uh, in the evenings though. We yeah. need to get some footage of them. Oh yeah. yeah. First time I saw the kangaroo, I'm like, what the heck is up with that deer? It's just messed up. <laughs> the but, deer's uh, messed up. This is a trap and skeet uh, shooting range right here that they got. So you walk all, all over uh, clay pigeons and crap as we're walking around. Kind of funny. But um, beautiful field. So we're gonna check out the pit area here and the walk the flight line yeah. and stuff. So what do you think, Bobby, is the main difference, say, for example, between this fun fly here and like your typical U.S. fun fly? Not that much, Not to that tell much. you the truth. It feels a lot, a lot like more home. difference in like European fun flies than yeah. Australia. Australia yeah. is more like U.S. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's There's very... a good, good mix of machines here. A lot, a lot of a line as always. But yeah. they've got. They seem to have a lot more niche stuff. A lot of Kasama stuff. Yeah, a it, lot you don't of, see uh, the extremes. Yeah. Uh, that you see in the U.S. with like mostly a line, and then exactly. you see a lot more variety. Exactly. A lot more different mixture of models. Exactly. Of course, exactly. You can see there's outrage flax everywhere. That oh, seems yeah. to be <laughs> happening all over the world right now. Exactly. Um, but I see a lot of different models. I see yeah. miniature aircraft actually. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably a little bit more than I see in the U.S. Yeah. I see, of course, a line Mikado. Mikado. I see a lot of Raptors that yeah. we haven't seen in the U.S. a whole lot lately. Exactly. Exactly. Good amount of scale stuff as always. But um, you know the system is similar. People come out here, they pay what thirty? I think it's 20, 30, 20, twenty-five dollars, yep. twenty-five yep. Australian yep. dollars to pre-register, <laughs> and then thirty dollars on site, I yep. believe. Yep. They have access to a raffle. They do a dinner Saturday night with the fun fly. I mean, it's yeah, it's basically the same it's thing. Nice. Really. All sorts of banners and stuff. If you want to pan the flight line real quick, got all sorts of banners and sponsors set up. I mean, they really do it quite nice over here. It's uh, and the level of flying is actually quite nice. I mean, they have pretty good pilots in Australia. Oh, it's ridiculous. Sure. They got yeah. uh, James Dargues here. He's placed uh, top ten in 3D Masters a few years in a row. Yeah. Gavin Broadbent, he's here. Gavin, yeah. Marco. Um, Marco's Marco. actually a really good pilot. He flies the sun. Oh, heck yeah. Mark Elias. Lilly. Yeah. Mark Lilly. Mark lots Lilly, of, yeah. Lots, lots of, of good you know, pilots. Yeah. Lots of good. If they came over to the U.S., they could easily hold their own against. Oh, absolutely. Lots yeah. of other guys. And they're mode one, too. They're a lot of them are mode, mode, mode one. one. Yeah. They're mode one. Yeah. So here we and, have registration and whatnot. And here's the registration tent. And, uh, um, let's see Eli, what else we got here. Eli Q stuff. We got Outrage, the Outrage tent on the left. Oh, as always. And you got, what is see, this? We, see, that's the thing. You see like weird stuff. <laughs> what is stuff. this tent? What is this stuff right here, Mr. Cameraman? Cameraman. It's <laughs> popular here? Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's Clots, Clots uh, Fuel. Oh, Clots and, Fuel, uh, yeah, Clots yeah. Fuel. Yeah. No, nice. the tent. What's up with the tent? And what's it's up with this tent? The tent. It's a Coleman. Comes out of the States, made in China. <laughs> made in China. <laughs> Comes out of the States, made in China. Nice. As you can see, guys are set up for night fly. Yeah. Have a good night fly set up. A lot of Futaba stuff here. I see more Futaba than Spectrum, whereas I see more Spectrum than Futaba back yeah. home. Yeah. Interesting how things change around. Oh, yeah. Rotor Rage oh, yeah. fuel becoming very popular here. Yeah, yeah, I guess yep. rotor rage and cool power are the two main fuels. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, Lots of vendors set up here. I'd say there's more vendors set up here for your 150 pilot fun fly than there would ever be at home. There's yeah. like five vendors here. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, it's a lot of vendors. But it's, and edge rotor blade seems to be very, very popular here too. Yes, and Maverick. <coughs> and and <coughs> hey boys, how you doing? Maverick. Good, Good. how's it going? And uh, so yeah, it's looking good. This is uh, the Coffs Harbor Heli Fest. Fun fly. We'll look into everything a little bit closer, but we just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a walk around and see what's up. Good deal. So we're doing an episode in Australia, and uh, we just figured we'd take this time to explain a little bit of politics. Politics. Politics is a little <clears throat> aspect of life which... Uh, happens you know what i mean everybody's exposed to it if you watch fox news and cnn you see it a lot <laughs> but uh we're we've gotten a lot of requests uh requests from people that want to know what it takes to get sponsored exactly um, we're talking like, about rc Health everybody politics. seems to want to be want to be sponsored these days and right? everybody is <laughs> everybody is everybody sponsored. has a rep yeah. deal with this guy and then oh he's going there and he's going there and he's we, so start by explaining to people why um, why are we in australia we are in Australia because we are fortunate enough to be sponsored by companies who feel like it is to their advantage to send us to different places to advertise or market new products. Correct. Whether that be a helicopter, whether that be blades, batteries, fuel, even just an event. You know, we've mm -hmm. had we've had clubs just bring us to an event just to promote helicopters. Yeah, exactly. They feel exactly. like we're ambassadors to the hobby. Yeah. 
So I guess. So that's good. So do you enjoy traveling all over the place to do this kind of stuff? Absolutely, I do. Do you nice. feel like the sponsors get something out of it? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Okay. But there's a misconception. A lot of people think that we're just here on vacation. Yeah, we are on vacation. Of course, we're having fun. We're not going to deny that. Rough life. But, you know, this is... You, sometimes, some, some trips, most trips, there's no... All trips are different, I guess. That's what okay. I mean to say. Like, a lot of trips are, like, some trips Trips are more work-oriented, where you're mm. doing more demos and answering more questions. And it's really a lot of work sometimes at the field. Exactly. This particular trip wasn't too bad. I mean, we still did fly a lot and yeah, 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 yeah. help quite a bit of people and answer a lot of questions but it wasn't that bad but yeah. generally you know a lot of the times it's it's actually a, lo a little bit of work oh, um yeah. you know going to holland 3d masters you know yeah. i'm sure it's going to be work doing yeah. demos and getting everything organized and mm -hmm. helping people out and answering questions and doing all that kind of stuff so it's not it's not 100 percent entertainment you know there's a lot of entertainment going on after hours but exactly you know, it's like anything else you know it's like people that are going to trade shows because they're selling pool equipment or anything you know of course they're going to have you know dinners and have time after a uh, good time after hours and everything else but the main focus of the trip is to help promote the products exactly and yeah. i feel like we did that this past weekend yeah, so absolutely. We, were, we were brought out here by various manufacturers and whatnot so the basis is we just go out we do our thing that we normally do in a fun fly for our sponsors back at home and um, you know, just pay a little bit more attention to these certain aspects and sponsors. Yeah, and exactly. And it exactly. works out pretty well. And we also bring feedback yeah. back to the manufacturers, yep. and uh, which helps them improve either their marketing yeah. or their products. And, and we can help out it. guys out here. So, like, we came out to Australia, and we're helping the, uh, you know, we're listening to the various manufacturers out here. Yeah, And we're listening exactly. to their needs, so hopefully we can go home and have a better idea of what's going on yeah. down here. Now, so tell people why companies sponsor people. Like, what's in it for them? What's in it for them is pretty much, it's advertisement. I'd say it's almost 100% advertisement. Um, you and I are in a bit of a different position. Um, we tend to do a lot of testing. Mm -hmm. So, instead of us getting paid to fly, per se, we get paid to test. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. we put in many, many, many hours a week and test R&D new products, yeah. you know, all sorts of different things. So for the most part, you know, I'd say they either get a test pilot or they get just free advertisement out there. Why? What's different? Like, what? why would a company sponsor somebody over somebody else? Like, why this guy over this guy? Like, what do you think are the the main it, things that it, companies look at it when they're depends. deciding to sponsor somebody. It just depends. I think a lot of times, like I think a pretty easy case is like, let's say if uh, there were to be a pilot who's maybe a teenager or something, maybe in 12 to, I don't know, 16 yeah. years old or something, maybe he's not the most outspoken guy in the world, but you know, he's helpful and he can fly the crap out of a helicopter. Yeah. So, you know, that'll go a, 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 a manufacturer. A long ways, yeah. A manufacturer will look at him with a different package and they may look at a guy to where he may not be as great of a pilot, but he really knows what he's doing in terms of building and wrenching and yeah. testing stuff. Yeah, like exactly, that. exactly. So there's all sorts of different yeah. things, and you yeah. don't really have to fit a certain category either. Yeah, that's what sponsors look in a pilot. I mean, there's generally the way I look at it is, you know, if I was a sponsor, I would look for a complete package. Yeah. You know, I don't care if the guy can fly and be an excellent pilot if he can't really hold a conversation exactly. or help somebody or know what they're doing. Exactly. I know a lot of pilots that are very, very good pilots yep. that are actually um, very even well-known, but yet they don't know how to fix their stuff. There's um, more of them than you think. There's, there's a <laughs> lot of them. And, you know, in some instances, you know, some of these guys have gotten lucky and have gotten sponsorships, but um, for the most part, you know, sponsors are actually looking for a full package. Totally agree. Can he fly? Yep. Can he work on his stuff? Yep. Um, is he can he present himself well? Yep. Is he, you know, is he approachable? Is he willing to help people out? Mm -hmm. um, can he travel? Is he available to travel around? I mean, there's, there's, it's a complete package. I agree. If you don't have it all combined, you're not going to make it. Totally and actually, agree. I believe the flying itself is probably one of the least important ones. Yeah. Of course, you have to know how to fly. You can't, yep. you know, expect to be sponsored and go out there and hover no sin. I agree. But. But uh, but it's, it's really, I don't think, the primary uh, thing that sponsors look at. They right. look at, 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 at everything else. I totally agree. Yeah. And I'm kind of thinking that, you know, when we got in it, so we got in it, uh, what, six, maybe we, we really got into the heat of things, maybe five, six years ago. And yeah, into like the heat of things. But, like, yeah, like I started flying almost seven. You probably yeah, almost same eight. Thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So, but, I mean, I feel like it was. it's a lot harder now than it is back then because, you know, we kind of got our foot in the door. 
You know, yeah. I mean, we traveled. We just there were only, off you know, when I stuff. started, when I got into the scene pretty much and started going to fun flies and stuff, yep. I remember in the United States, there were probably only just a handful of good pilots yep. that were well known. I mean, exactly. Alan and Jason and Curtis and yep. Marcus Kim. I mean, yep, yep, and, yep. you know, all Eric Larson, guys, maybe Bodos, yeah. and that was it. Yep. It was five or six guys that were well known, and, and yep. that was it. Now, you know, there's dozens upon dozens of them, even more. Everybody's a good pilot. You just need to figure out what that is that you can, you know, if you can help out a company in a certain way, even if you want to do that. You know, a lot of people, too, think that uh, think that being sponsored ever is just, oh, we're just going to get free parts, and then that's it. No, no, it's no there's, with what there's you a lot. You, it works both ways. Yeah, you got to If you expect back. free stuff, yep. you have to give something back in return. I totally agree. And, uh, you know, going back to the five, six, seven years ago, whatever, um, you would go to a fun fly in the United States, for example, and again, you might get lucky to see a couple of really good pilots, yep. maybe one, maybe three. So if you were sort of okay, kind of good, up and coming at the time, mm -hmm. you were noticed by sponsors. Yep. Oh, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's kind of like how I got noticed because I, I progressed very quickly in my flying and there weren't that many good pilots around. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you go to a fun fly. Um, and we've seen it here in Australia as well. There's a lot of good pilots. Heck yeah. The level of flying has gone up tremendously. I mean, nowadays you just go to any flying field and a, a lot of the guys you come across can fly and can do pirou flips yeah. and can <laughs> yeah. do pirouetting maneuvers and all kinds of crazy stuff. That wasn't the case. So with that being said, it's a lot more difficult today to get a sponsorship. And like Bobby said, you have to find... Um, you have to have something unique to yourself, whether yep. it is the fact that you're a likable person or that you're willing to spend your own money yep. to travel to these events to get noticed, to mm -hmm. then eventually yep. um, get the sponsors to notice you and pay your way there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah, it's, it's not say, easy nowadays. I'd have to say, too, it's got to be a big sacrifice. I mean, I know it tied up a lot of your life when you oh, first yeah. got into oh, it. Yeah. I mean, it surely tied up a lot. I mean, it took me, because of helicopters, I know for certain I had to do an extra semester in college for for certain. Yeah. If it wasn't for oh, yeah, helicopters, yeah. I would have been done on time. And, and like I said, I mean, a lot of the times you have to spend a lot of money yep. to, <laughs> to be able to get a sponsorship. And is it something that is really worth it? Yep. You know, for all you guys that have inquired about becoming a sponsor pilot, yep. do you really want this? I mean, it seems a lot like it's a lot of fun, yep. but it's also a lot of work, believe it or not. And you have to put a lot of time, a lot of effort. You have to give up your family life. Yep. You have to like spent all the money you have yep. to be able to buy helicopters, parts, yep. spent travel tickets to go to events, to get noticed, to practice, to do this and that. And, you know, it's after all, it's just toy helicopters, guys. I mean, yes, honestly. It is toy helicopters. So, I mean, it's something that you kind of have to think about, you know. No doubt. But um, what what are, uh, what level, what what's this, like, if you become a sponsored pilot, explain to, to the viewers what, is there different yeah, levels? Yeah. Like, what what are the benefits? Like, what are people uh, generally expecting yeah, to receive? Different levels and whatnot. So, I guess the best way to start it is everyone seems to have some sort of field rep. Now, all sorts of companies have different. Uh, they yeah, might just call reps. It factory pilot. Uh, you know, it, maybe at the high levels, it's it's very confusing. But the low level it seems like there's everybody has a field rep. A field rep is usually you'll just get a dealer cost, so the same cost yeah. as a hobby shop. 30, 35 percent, 20, yeah. anywhere between 20 yeah. and 35 percent. Now, yeah. benefits of field reps is really cool. A lot of times, instead of having to order stuff from the hobby shop, you can order it right from your uh, supplier. So back when like V blades, when I got in with V blades, I could order blades directly from Vic. You know, it's easier with shipping and whatnot, and just easier to handle than a regular hobby shop. Mm -hmm. You get t-shirts, you get stickers. Now, field rep's awesome. Those of you guys who are at the field rep spots, I'd say that's the most fun. Yeah. You're really not committed to anybody. You, you're you not really, this, you're you know. kind of committed in the sense that you're a lot of the field rep, not all, but yep. some field rep uh, positions, you, you'll be asked to only fly that brand. Exactly. But you're not really committed in the sense that, you you know, you don't have to report back to them as far as testing things and, yep. and you're not obligated to go to events. You're not going to demand that you go here right. or do this or do that. Right. Right, right, right. Um, so it's a lot of fun being no. a field rep. Oh, is field a lot rep's of fun. awesome. Then yeah. they've got a little bit more of a level, maybe to where you'll get. Um, maybe you work for a wholesaler or something, a big distributor. You can get their cost, and then maybe you might get some free stuff too. Yeah. Now, when you start getting free stuff, that's when companies start demanding more out of you. They demand. They don't demand, but they ask that you go to more events. They ask that you travel. They ask that you know you go out there and still help out on the forums as you should with a field rep. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you can get to the point to where to where we are, to where very few people are. I feel like is to where they get paid to actually test and fly stuff. Yeah, so and there's a misconception. People think that we get paid to fly. We don't get paid to fly. 
test. Um, we get paid to either design or develop or test. Yep. Or exactly. exactly. I mean, we're really there's very not few people who get paid to fly. That's all they do. Fly. I, I don't I think there's. Even, I don't think there's anybody. I can't even think. I of haven't thought of anybody. Yeah. Um, it's always you, development. It's always development. There's yep. always the testing, the R&D involved. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But I can't imagine of someone just sitting at home getting paid just to go to a fun fly to have fun and fly. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know the first person that does that. It always I mean, every, anybody that's getting paid that you can think of, I mean, even Alan, Z Alan Zabel himself, yep. he works a lot. He goes to the factory and spends weeks there yep. away from everything just, just to earn the money. So, yep. um, so now you, you have an idea to get real. <laughs> Get real. Get real. Just, it's just simple. It's like I said before, it's toy helicopters. Um, you know, I see that the people that are out there trying and trying and trying and trying so hard are the ones that have the least amount of luck. Yep. You know, when I started, and I'm sure Bobby had the same thing happen to him, when I started, I wasn't thinking about, I didn't care. I didn't want to be sponsored. Yeah, I just, yeah, I was yeah. having fun. Heck yeah. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to have the financial means to, to buy my own stuff, and I enjoy going to fun flies, and I just paid my way to these places and, and, and bought these helicopters and, and had the time to fly and just flew because I wanted to get better because I was really hooked up. Yep. I wanted, you know, it, it was for my own self. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. that kind of... Personal achievement. Yeah, per personal achievement. And then everything else sort of, like, clicked in place yep. automatically. Like, I didn't ask for it. It just kind of right. came. Exactly. And by... Like when I say get real, yeah. what I mean by that is if, if you, and this is my theory, if you have to ask or beg, yep. it means you do not deserve it. Yep. You know, if you get noticed, you will be approached. Someone will come up to you and say, hey, would you like to fly, you know, my blades or yep. my helicopter? And then that's how things start. I so. agree. Yeah, going out there and sending all sorts of emails to manufacturers and posting all sorts of videos of yourself on the internet like, hey, look at me. It's not yeah. quite the way to do it. You want to go chase after them? Or are they dangerous? You're doing it. I'm doing it? No, I'm good. I'm good back here. I'll film you chase. <laughs> Drive a hard bargain. Look at him. He's looking right at us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Oh yeah, it's time to call the doctor. Hey guys, welcome to Doc Wing's segment for uh, episode number 13. Uh, because Mr. Wing himself is uh, out of Florida right now and we have no way to get a hold of him in person. We had to uh, use the, the wonderful technology, technology of the internet uh, to get him here. So uh, here it is, Mr. Wing. How's it going, uh, Doc Wing? Just wonderful. You enjoying yourself? Yep. People's coming down to the shore. We're trying to make a little money. So far, so good. Nice. Are you ready for these questions? These are uh, Australian questions, Mike. Oh, boy. I'm so thrilled. I'm shaking in my fucking boots. All right. Let's get the questions going. Here's the first question for you. Anyway, Flipper, you can't. <laughs> I've seen a photo of you, mate, and it's not looking good. I can tell you that right now, mate, you know. Anyway, so uh, what's the story that I hear about you uh, getting Bert to uh, go to a, uh, a night fly in uh, somewhere in Virginia, fuck knows where that is, and um, he, um, he actually took it out and, uh, and won some money, and uh, you uh, demanded uh, at least half of it. I mean, I cannot believe that. How, how, how could you do that, you cheap fuck? Hey, you are cheap. Are you? You ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cheap cock. Fuck, I feel like it. Go stick it in your gazunta. <laughs> you wasn't. You, you. He said. He said that you're cheap. Fuck him. Cheap. Get that bitch to come over here. See who's cheap. Yeah, he wants you to go over there. He wants you to go to Australia. You think he could go there? What the fuck for? I don't know. He wants to Dude, meet you. Fucking... He wants to meet you because you're you're a low-level celebrity. Yeah, yeah, very loud. Yeah, all right. Who's that? Who was that? Who was that guy? That's Alex. Alex. Hey, Alex. Right here. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> all right. Let's go. 
Let's go to the next question. Next question. Dear Doc Wing, I'm Mark from Sydney, Australia. I want to ask you, did you actually do any study to become a doctor or are you hopeless like we all think you are? If so, how do you get away doing surgery with that fucking thing on the side of your, your arm there? Because I'm impressed and I'd like to see a video of it. Can you please show us a video of it? Thank you. P.S. If you flap that fucking thing quick enough, how high can you get off the ground? Oh! Isn't Mr. Fucking Funny! <laughs> that was Mark. Yeah, well, Mark, you know what? I hope a kangaroo comes and grabs your legs and humps you right in the ass. My little fucking flipper can flip pretty good, bitch! He, uh, he, 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 he wonders if you have a, a degree in medicine or if it's just all, like, a lot. <laughs> I have, a, I have a special degree. Okay. Which I cannot comment on. But I will show them my special degree if I ever get the fuck over there. Oh, really? Okay. And then he also wanted to know, like, if you flopped the wing fast enough, how far off the ground you would get. The problem it is, I would probably fly in perfect circles. The little thing's so quick, it's unbelievable. <laughs> nice. Here's the last question. Last question. Here we go. Dear Dr. Wynn, I'm lonely. I've only been doing this for two months. I need more girls with boobs. What do you reckon? <laughs> she needs bigger tits or something. I can't see her tits. Are you sure that's a girl? No, she actually has some nice ones. Uh, here, you want me to play? You want me to yeah, I gotta, I gotta you, check her out. You, you, want, you want to see it again? Uh, here, I'll, I'll, find, I'll find it for you. Oh, well, let's, let's just go ahead and play it again so you can watch it uh, one more time. Hold on one second. Here we go. Dear Dr. Wynn, I'm lonely. I've only been doing this for two months. I need more girls with boobs. What do you reckon? Let me see here. Maybe. She wants to know how to get more chicks with boobs. That's it's easy. How? Let's go to a lesbian Chat room. They bought all the tits of the ass. She wants the fuck. What the fuck? She must be a horny bitch. <laughs> I can't understand. All right, all right, all right. That's that's enough. That's 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 enough. We'll uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Wing. He, he's not. You're not wearing your uh, your doctor's uh, apparel this time around. I had to send it to the cleaners. I had, I had to get cleaned. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's good. Well, I appreciate uh, appreciate you being uh, here to answer the questions, and hopefully we'll uh, see you again uh, for the next episode. Yep. Tell all my mates I said hello. Sure will. All right. Thanks. See ya. Hey, guys. I'm here with... Uh, Four of the best pilots in Australia. Australia. Um, these are all like really good pilots. We have Gavin here. He uh, flies for Kasama, factory pilot. We have Timmy. Timmy is uh, RC Bits in Australia, uh, Edge distributor, among other things. Oh, yeah. Carry a lot of stuff. We have Marco. Marco is actually one of the only people that I've heard of that has made a very successful transition from Moat 1 to Moat 2. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. And finally, Mark Lilly. He, uh, Another great pilot, very well known here in the country, very funny character, yeah. So um, basically we're going to talk about Moat 1, Moat 1. A lot of you guys in the United States have no clue what Moat 1 is, like it's a very new thing to me. It's interesting because in this country a lot of people do Moat 1, like there's more Moat 1 than Moat 2, right? Uh, it's, I'd say it's probably close to half-half. It's, uh, I reckon a few years ago it was probably more Moat 1 than Moat 2, but I think people are slowly starting to move across to Mode 2 after they sort of sit down and assess what, what how, how easy this is to learn certain moves. Like in the initial stages of hovering, it's probably much of a mushness, but as you start to get into a lot of pirouetting maneuvers, it becomes a lot easier to um, do them in Mode 2. But some moves are easier in uh, Mode 1, but it's about, yeah, there's a mix. It's, there's, there's pluses and cons to both. So basically, Mode 1, you guys are not familiar with it. The, um, so, Gav, where is in Mode 1? Where's the elevator, like, elevator is on the left, right? The elevator's on the left uh, with the rudder. So left your... stick is elevator up and down and yes. rudder left, right? Rudder left, right. And then the right stick is collective? The right stick is collective with... Uh, Aileron. Yes, with roll. Okay. Uh, together, together. And the main question here is, 
when you do a pirouette flip. And that's the first thing that I thought about because as you guys know, when you're pirouette flipping, you're steering the stick and the swash has to go through this perfect circular motion. So you have to kind of mix left and right and that's pretty tough. So do you guys think, let's ask Mark, do you think that you can actually do a successful nice locked in pirou flip in uh, moat one with moat one well yeah because a lot of people do it so so it uh, is doable it is doable you he, don't marco you, before he switched over used to do some of the nicest pirou flips in mode one and uh look at james dog kevin einstein they do really smooth pirou flips but do you think that of course you guys are used to moat one the same way i'm used to moat two but do you yeah. think that if you look at it from the outside if you've never flown before oh, it looks impossible do you think it do you think it's if you were to choose today what to fly, would you go? Would you still start with mode no, one? No, I go mode two. Why? Because uh, it, it, things like pyro moves would be a lot easier. Would be easier, yeah, right? There's no, there's no zigzagging and all that kind of thing. You can circle, stir, all that, and it does. It is easier. Yeah. So, and that's why. But I started with a little tiny thing, and that's just what it was, mode one, and that's just what what you do. You know what I mean? So yeah. So basically, basically most people in Australia start flying, the people that start flying Moat 1, I believe they do it because others are doing it and it's just a logical thing because it's easier to learn that way, correct? When I, when I, I, mean, st when I started, uh, there was uh, no Mode 1 transmitters available in the shops, for instance. You mean Moat 2? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, Moat 2. Moat 2, correct. Uh, Moat 2 was not available. Yeah. And I did not know Mode 2 at all. So uh, it was the so, log so logical I thing. I learned that, yeah. yes, yes. And Marco here is, again, one of the few people that have successfully switched from Moat 1 to Moat 2. Why, why, did, you, why did you make the switch? I made the switch um, mainly because um, when I got into the pirouetting stuff on Mode 1, I struggled with uh, reversals. So, um, yeah, I, th I thought, and I've always liked the concept of Mode 2, but like Gav, when I started, uh, Mode one was in. There was there was no mode two radio. So so nowadays. Um, what about oh, your fingers reaching? Wasn't also because you couldn't reach? It's yeah, I struggled. I struggled with. Um, yeah. Also struggled. Yeah, with um, reaching over to this side and uh, and making adjustments. But because you have to go quite fast back and forth when you're doing pirouetting wedding maneuvers and you're zigzagging this one. Um, yeah, I just with reversals. I, I, look, I look, found, look at these fingers, mate. They're stubby. Yeah, it's, <laughs> they really are stubby, though. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. So let's do like some maneuvers just for fun. Give the radio to uh, Mark and here I'll uh, have somebody next to him like hold a helicopter. And uh, do a, uh, I don't know, let's let's do a pirou flip. This is just the first thing I ask about. Okay, this so you go over, but you be zig, it's weird when you're not looking at it. You gotta zig, you gotta zigzag back and forth. That is a pirou flip? Yeah, yeah. No way. You're the elevator. Watch the swash. Yeah. And rudder constant, of course. I can't, you can't do it because you're not watching. You can't do it because you're not watching it in the air. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to the air later yeah, and yeah. show it. So you just got to keep it going. You've got to zigzag back and forth. Whereas you guys on mode two are uh, basically steering. Yeah, exactly. You know basically I mean? You're holding steering. over a little bit of pitch and you're doing that. The so stir and pray. Stir, stir and pray. Timmy, show us a... Uh, Show, show us an aileron. This this was funny. He, show, yeah, he showed yeah he showed me this yesterday. Uh, I, I believe the aileron TikTok mode one you can literally do with one hand. You could yeah. you could almost hold your radio there and just go. It's relatively easy. Diagonal opposites basically. And so the quicker you want to do them, the more you'll be going slower in this sort of pattern. So it's more like a imagine an eye, the shape of an eye. So you sort of curve up a bit. An oval. An oval. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You oval into the top right corner yeah, and you oval down to the bottom left corner. Yeah, yeah. Keeping in mind that this is my collective here. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Uh, impossible for us people that started with mode two, probably as impossible at first try for the people that started with mode one to go into mode two. So with that being said, we're gonna move over to the field and we're gonna show you some like picture in picture stick movements. Uh, this is gonna be fun. All right, so we're here with our good buddy, Gavin Broadbent. Hello, Gavin everybody. has been a 3D Masters competitor, shit, an experts class, podium, all sorts of world-renowned stuff. So Gav here has got his uh, Shrima, and he's going to show us a few different maneuvers on mode one radio. So we kind of have a little bit of a ghetto training camp, and uh, so you can see exactly what's going on here. So the first thing we notice is his collective and his elevator are completely reversed. So you guys at home, you can take a look that the right stick is actually the one that is straight up and down, and the left one is the one that has the spring in it, which is opposite breast. So Gav, just fly around, let's do some, uh, I don't know, anything, just fly around, do some normal flying like this, and we'll see what you're doing. So from what we're hearing, a lot of the 
the load one and load two stuff is kind of similar, you know, in the way that things are done. But where it really gets weird is this pirouetting stuff. The pirouetting stuff's really where it gets weird. So you can see as he's doing the pirouetting flip, <laughs> his, his hands just pretty much don't represent anything that looks anything too close to a, a load two pirouetting flip. So if you can, guys, go out further a little bit away from these guys. And let's see just a right to left. I want to see you kind of what we call stirring the stick. Okay. It's just a nice slow pirouette where you're nudging in the direction so we can see how the corrections work. Whoop, whoop. So you can see as he's correcting for it. It's very, very different than it would be for a mode 2 stick. Nice. All right, let's see a good old aileron TikTok. And if we can, let's see it one hand and then lock it in. <laughs> one hand? There we go. So that's a one hand and hammer on to the There we go. So now if you were to speed it up, how would that look? Nice. 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 Alright, how about tail down? Tail down to the So for you guys at home, with no two, that's just completely opposite from what we're used to. <laughs> That's awesome. So have you ever done any crack? Any crack in the Oh, uh, you can aileron, yeah. You can with aileron. So like that's that. the same for us. Like that. So that's about the only thing that's about the same. <laughs> Forward flight and everything else seems to be about the same. How about like a, a funnel? Yeah. Or a hurricane? Yeah, a really yeah, slow, yeah. really slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll show you uh, funnel. Yeah. Uh, very easy, very easy. Easy funnel. You can sort of lock it in. Really easy. <laughs> Like this. Like that? Nice. That's awesome. Any other maneuvers that you can think uh, of that will throw us up with this? The, the strong point is where you're flying straight line like this, yeah. making correction on aileron only like this. That and is you true. can you can lock in a very steady hurricane, very easy. Right. Very easy. Because like your that. elevator and your aileron are not interacting with each other. Yes. It's very smooth, very easy. That makes sense. That makes sense. Alright guys, and well, this is about all we got for you for the maneuvers. <laughs> How about an auto? Yeah, let's see an auto. <laughs> So is your throttle hold in a different position? Oh, no, same, same. <laughs> Bit of an aerobatic auto for you guys. Oh yeah. A few little flips and sort of slow downs. Nice. There we go. Nice. Maybe a bit of a floater here. Yeah, a bit of a floater. A bit of a floater. A bit of a Bobby Watts special. A bit of a floater. <laughs> a bit of a floater, mate. <laughs> Very slow. Very, nice. Very slow. Nice, mate. Hero flip out a little bit. Nice. Cool. Gavin Broadnet, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for demonstrating. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank cool. you. <laughs> cool. Hey guys, I'm here with James Dargue. Um He's actually a really good pilot, one of the best in Australia. He's been to 3D Masters um, and he's flying Moat 1. So this is just proof that it doesn't really matter whether you fly Moat 1 or Moat 2 or any other Moat, you can still really be good at it regardless. And um, how's it going, James? Good? Yeah, good. Having a good weekend. Yourself? Yeah, good. Having a good time at the Fun Fly? Oh, yeah. Every year. Best Fun Fly I come to each year. So Nice. You've been to 3D Masters, what, like two times or something? Uh, three. three. Three times? Yeah, three times. And uh, you've, I heard you've done really well, like top ten or something? Yeah, first year I got top ten and then uh, just out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the talent is, is getting more more difficult. Like People like me, I don't even try to go there anymore. <laughs> but uh, uh, you started flying originally Moat 1s. Ever, you've always flown Moat 1, right? Yeah, I always flying Moat 1. Um, never really tried Moat 2, so I yeah, just stuck with it and kept practicing. And you, why did you start Moat 1? Just because everybody was, it was what everybody was doing? or Yeah, everyone in, in my club was flying Moat 1, and the other guys uh, were all Moat 1, so... Yeah. And you, you can do all kinds of technical stuff, no problem, like you can do, like, it, it doesn't really, you don't feel like you have, you don't feel like it hurts your flying or like it makes it more difficult to learn certain things by being a Moat 1, not really? No, not really at all, it's just, yeah, you got to put the time in, I, I failed anyway, so. Alright man, I appreciate it, thanks, no yeah, thanks a lot. Alright guys, hope you enjoy this segment, uh, showing you the differences between Moat 1 and Moat 2, um, as you can see, uh, 
there's pilots flying mode one that are just as good as the pilots that are flying mode two. It's really not all that important which mode you decide to fly. But the main reason, the main purpose of this segment was to show you the main differences and to make you uh, make it easier for you guys to make a decision when it comes to choosing what mode to fly. Of course, if you're in your early stages, um, if you're starting out or if you believe you can switch and you're already a mode one pilot, go for it because I, we honestly believe mode two, it's becoming more popular and it's a better choice overall for flying pirouetting maneuvers simply because you have your entire cyclic steering on the right hand side. However, again, with that being said, you saw guys that were flying mode one, there were really, really good pilots. So if you're already comfortable with mode one and this is what you've been doing for a while, there's absolutely no need to change. So with that being said, we're at Surfer's Paradise uh, near the Gold Coast in Australia, Queensland, and we're going to move on to the next segment. Alright, so we're here with a uh, special female pilot here at the Coffs Harbor Helifest Fun Flight, and this is Heidi, right? Yes, Heidi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Is this your first fun fly? First flight. And what do you think? Yeah, it's fun. It's very good. good. Interesting. Lots of pilots. Good atmosphere. Nice. So how long have you been flying here? Uh, about two months. Really? Hmm. And I see you have, oh, do you have your helicopter somewhere around here? <laughs> I, I painted it myself. Did you know? Yes. <laughs> Nice. So, what made you start flying? Uh, my partner. Your partner? Yes. And how long has he been flying? Um, oh, six months. Six months. This is my Hallie. So, you painted the, you know, the girl in there and everything? Yeah. Oh, the girl's a sticker, and so I painted the pink, and then I got the stickers made up, and yeah. The pink skids and everything? Pink skids and everything. I had pink training gear as well when I was... Really? Yeah. So, who's better, you or him? Oh, him. <laughs> I'm better on this because it's pink. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so who flies more? Um, he does. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully we can get the camera and catch a flight or something, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. and. Um, yeah. So we've been doing a thing on here. Um, there's mode one and mode two. Everyone at home has mode two flying to where your collective is on the left, mode two, mode one on the right. What do you fly? Mode two. Mode two. <laughs> we have one here. That's mode two. I think you're about the fourth person. So... Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was nice nice to meet you. you Excellent. You should invite more of your friends to fly, you know. I'll see how I go, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Heidi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice All right, so we're here in uh, Australia, and, you know, for our next segment, we're going to do some... Uh... Dude, can you hear me on this one? No. Okay. Hey, Mark and Bill, give me the other mic. This one doesn't work. <laughs> so, like I said, for our next segment, we're going to talk about wild animals here in the Alpine. <laughs> <laughs> nice, appreciate it. Well done, well done, well done. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? Brother Rick here. We'll talk to you a little bit about a uh, little bit of. We're gonna get into a little bit of politics today in the hobby. We're gonna go into some different things. Like um, I'd like to touch on first what the what the controversy seems to be between airplanes and helicopters being able to share the same field. Like what's a what's the little problem? Well, they're both things that fly. So I mean, why don't like particularly like older people? Like it seems like when you come out to the to the field, they always have like some type of problem, like with the helicopter and the. The helicopter's dangerous, and like it's gonna, it's gonna somehow do something bad. But like you know, their their prop plane, their their gasoline-powered prop plane, could never hurt anybody because it's not a helicopter. And like, uh, like, you know, as soon as you come out there with it, it's all oh, look that guy, look that that guy's got a helicopter. Like like you're some type of leper or something. Like you're you're some type of person that's gonna maybe somehow the helicopter's gonna make the plane sick. Like if they're sitting there like with the with the planes, like the helicopter somehow is gonna make them sick or somehow. Maybe, maybe what it's all about is that maybe the helicopter you have to have a little bit of a uh, little bit of intelligence to use it. Maybe somehow it's intimidating, like the people that, that fly the plane, or they don't they don't fully understand the helicopter, so therefore they don't like it. See, that's what that maybe that's what it's about. It's like we don't we're not successful with that, and we really don't understand how it works, so therefore we don't like it. 
like kind of like on like a primitive like level like oh that's yeah we don't we don't fool with that because we don't we don't like that type thing and I see this a lot like you go around to different different places and the, you just get this like beat vibe like type thing on with that but also I also like to look a little bit like at the at the politics of our hobby like especially when we focus on like the the sponsored pilots the guys you know you know the big guys guys that you know they have the they have the free equipment and the free radios and then you know the red carpet and the, you know what fascinates me though is how one minute somebody's on one team and they're with that and they're completely supporting it and they're carrying the banners and the signs and my god that's who I work for now then a minute later got somebody else's sign, I got somebody else's shirt on, different sign, they're carrying a different sign and they have the same straight face the same exact straight face like a poker face like a minute ago I work for company A but right now I work for company B and company B is just as good as company A because I work for them now but a minute ago I worked for the other company and when I was with them they were the best but now I'm with the other company and that's even somehow that's the same and my face doesn't change but the company that I work for has changed. And I'm just, I just think myself, I'm like, damn, like these guys are kind of, some of those guys are kind of weird, like with that, like they, you know, they jump around like a bunch of kangaroos with springs on their feet. Like one minute they're over here, and the next minute they're over there. It's like they're tick-tocking back and forth, like from one company to other. Like you're watching a tennis match. Like you're sitting there, it's like, whoa, he's with company A. Whoa, he's with company B. Company A, company B, company A, company B. You're just like, man, this shit. See, like, I wish you're like, I wish somehow I was that big. Like, somehow I could be tricked. Like, I, if some big company, like, took me on, like, I'd just stay with them. Especially, like, they gave me a big stupid check, like, a big bag of cash. I'd be like, oh, yeah. I'd just stay with them. Like, I'd wear their shirt. I'd be like, god damn it. That's, this, this company that I'm with is the best. I'm the best with them. So, I mean, that just, you know, I just, I just wonder about all that stuff. Like, where, where all that's headed. I mean, how many, how many times can somebody change their shirt? How many different companies can they work for before their credibility becomes somewhat questionable? They're with this place and they're with that place and, and all these different things. But I mean, where's the cutoff point? Where do you where do you draw the line and just stay with a particular thing and just you're with that? I mean, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my old school train of thought. But I just I always thought just stay stay with one thing and you know try to be the best. Until next time. This is Brother Rick signing off. Take care. So what do you recommend someone to, uh, what do you recommend the viewers to, that they need to do to become a sponsor pilot? Well, I would recommend number one, they travel a lot. Go to as many different events as they can. Pack your bags, drive eight, 18 hours, 48 <laughs> hours to different events, fly to different things. If you want to become a sponsored pilot, everything else in life has to become on hold. It has to become almost secondary. Yeah, exactly. It almost has to. You have to kind of give up your life for yeah, helicopters. You really yes. do, which is a shame. But yeah. travel, go to different events. Travel, you'll meet practice smiling. your flying, of course. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Practice, practice as, as much, much as, as you can. can. Yeah. So when you travel, you'll meet sponsored pilots, you'll meet manufacturers, you'll meet distributors. You'll just get an idea of like the whole it, picture. Yeah, like we were saying before, if you know back in the day it was so much easier to get noticed nowadays you almost have to kind of yep. get to know the right people yes you do um and yes, the only way to meet meet the right people the sponsors the distributors the yep. the dealers the other sponsor pilots is just to travel to these events exactly yeah. and now second of all another thing that i'd really like to mention is don't do anything for the deal the only reason that you and I are where we are right now is because we truly, genuinely believe and believed in the products that we represent. Absolutely, we got 100%. To where we are. If you're flying, if you're flying, oh, I'm so let's, glad let's you brought say, this up. Let's just say, I'm so glad you yeah, brought yeah. this up. So yeah, let's yeah. just say, if you're out there flying a JR radio, and someone from, let's say, if you can get some sort of deal with a high tech radio, and you've never flown it before, and you and you accept a deal from high from high tech while flying your JR radio, you're not going to make it very far in life. I guarantee it. In the hobby. Well, I agree. Life too. Yeah, you're just I a bad agree. person. Um, yeah, um, cool. yeah. There's <laughs> so much speculation about. Oh, yeah. We definitely go to wherever the money is. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. There's so yeah. much money. We're making yeah. so much money at yeah. this. <laughs> no, not at all. But anyway, if, if <laughs> just do so. If you're very pat. I mean, I've been flying miniature aircraft for like six years. Yeah, you've been flying that forever. Six years. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and you've been flying, you know, all sorts. And of I stuff. flew miniature aircraft for years, yep. and and the only reason I left had nothing to do with the product. Yeah. And nothing Politics. to do with a better deal. <laughs> I never got 
a better offer from yeah. a line than yeah. I did from miniature at the time. I was exactly. being treated excellent by miniature. Exactly. Um, exactly. So yeah. I mean, it's just all sorts of things. So yeah. just pick something that you like. It pick, if something works for you and you really want to go out there and represent it, go for it. Yeah. All thumbs up. Now, one also, thing that's important is how again we go back to the image thing. Yeah. How you um, portray yourself. how you portray yourself. There are there's probably one a couple oh, yeah. of pro pilots that get panked on the forums. Yeah. Do not let that happen to you. Yeah. That is not good Let's for you. Let's talk about forums. Do not be right. a douche. Let's yeah. talk about forums. Yeah. What do you have forums. to say to people about forums? Forums could uh, could be uh, actually really good. Yep. And could be really really bad. Yep. Just uh, just just use the forums with care. That's all I have to say. If you go on the forums, yeah. you spend all your time trolling posts. And getting, I'm dead serious. If you get pinked and <laughs> shit and do all this crazy nonsense just to be a dick, if you go out there and you're a dick, if you've got more than like two pink posts or something, you need to reevaluate what you're doing in life. Yeah, I agree. Seriously. Yeah, Don't seriously. go out there and be a dick to people. Just yeah. be nice. Why can't you just be like, hey guys, I have a question about this thing. So, okay, the, 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 you answer questions, done. Yeah, done. People exactly. have to go out there and be a dick. Yeah, just don't be a dick. Good deal. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Same when you go to fun flies. Yes. Be approachable. Be just a normal person. Like, there's no reason to grow a head because have this big head because you can do paraflips. Sorry, everybody can do them <laughs> now with reversals and everything else. So it exactly. does not matter. And all you're doing is flying a toy helicopter. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a toy, toy helicopter. helicopter. So don't grow a head. You know, it's not worth it. Just, exactly. just be yourself. Be approachable. Just have fun. Exactly. That's all that matters. Have is fun. have fun. If you're having fun, companies will notice that. They'll come after you. They'll, Absolutely. You can work with them and do your thing, and you can grow prosperous into the future Absolutely. with toy helicopters. And you know, the hobby is definitely the fun part. And like we said before, when we yep. get paid, we get paid to do the not fun stuff. Oh yeah. The testing, the prototyping. Yep. You know, it's. We kind of enjoy it, but at the same time, it's, it's work. It's yep. really not fun. Yeah, you have to get ready. You know, we're yeah. by ourselves at a yeah. field. Yep. We're not hanging out with anybody. Yeah. Some, most of the time, we're by ourselves at yep. a field. You know, we crash our stuff because something went wrong. Yep. And, you know, we have to go home and work, you know, eight hours on fixing a problem and then making corrections to that prototype, whatever exactly. it is, and going back out there. That is not fun. Exactly. The going to a fun fly, the hanging out with friends, the actual flying. That's the when fun you part. have Exactly. That's, that's the, fun the fun part. part. And that's, that's the actual hobby. Exactly. Part of the hobby. And, and, exactly. and that's, it has to be enjoyable. If you're not having fun, just go do something else. Yeah, go seriously. do checkers. Go yeah, check yeah, just Chinese go checkers. collect stamps or, I don't know, just... just go fishing. <laughs> Just plant flowers or something. Yeah. Cool. Hope this was useful, guys. So um, the moral of the story. Yeah. Moral of the story. Don't get sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> moral of the story is it could be rewarding. It could be exciting. It can be a lot of fun, but uh, it doesn't come without sacrifices. You're not going to just go out there and because you can twist the sticks and fly well, get a hell of a deal. It's just not going to happen. And you know, Bobby has uh, graduated uh, with an engineering degree last year. Yep. I have uh, an engineer engineering degree myself in yep. computer science, College of Engineering. Yep. So we have you know a certain background that allows us to to um, work on the design. Yep. And and the uh, and, and yeah the engineering side of the hobby. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't do it if you don't have a college degree. Of course you can. But the point of the matter is is you know again. Again, we've said it like 10 times, you're not going to get paid to fly. Yep. Um, so Don't if you think that you can make this, do. you know, what you do for a living, think twice. Because yep. it's really, really hard to make it happen. And when it does happen, there isn't a lot of money in it. So. Nah, go, go <laughs> so, plant flowers. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope, uh, hope this was useful and uh, we're going to move on. And for you kitties out there, who think that you're just gonna go fly toy helicopters and make a living out of it, not even graduating high school, not even considering college, when I find you, Chicken Wing and I are gonna come out there, we're gonna kick you right in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in school. Stay in school. It's a good thing. All right, so we're here, we're here in the outback. Solid. We're in the Whoa. outback. We're gonna, we're going to load of kangaroos over here. They're tall, they're like five feet tall. And this is our boy Caleb, and he's gonna go stir them up and get them going. All right, go get him, go get him. Go get him, go get him, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Lower, 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 lower. <laughs> oh no, there's some to your left though. There's some to your left. Oh, a little bit to your left more. 
Oh, the kangaroos are jumping, mate. Get him, mate. Get him. Watch out for that speed. There you go, mate. Nice. Oh, God. Oh, shit. <laughs> Boy, that's how nice. we do it here in the outback, mate. We're home. We're in the U.S. Well, in the U.S., but not really home yet. We're like two-thirds of the way there. Yeah. That was a long flight. 14 hours. Yeah. 14 hours. Almost 15 on the plane, actually, by the Sucked. time we boarded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucked. But, but there uh, was a good point to the flight. Steve-O was there. Yeah, Steve-O. From, Steve Jackass. from Jackass. He was, was on our flight. Yeah. And we didn't get an interview with him. That would have been badass. That so would have been cool. He seemed yeah. very busy. But anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed Australia. We did. Uh, it was Good a little times. bit of a change of pace here. Yep. You know, um, we're gonna. What are we gonna do next? I don't know. I'm too tired to think about it. <laughs> we're too tired to think about fly bar lifts. Let's do some fly bar lifts. We're gonna do some in-depth fly bar lift setups on some systems. Yeah, we'll gonna, do that. Yeah, and uh, and then we're going to do 3D masters. The yeah. Mastas. The Mastas. 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 Yeah. I look so. forward to that. Yeah, yeah, that should be fun. Until then, you guys take care. Yep. See you next time. Oh my, are you kidding me? No, it sparkles in the sun. <laughs> I see that. What? Dear Doc, when Wing, what's the question? <laughs> ask him a question. Just talk about Doc Wing. Dear Doc Wing, is it bad of you to eat KFC? Eat your own kind. Is that bad? Is that wrong? <laughs> is that making him a cannibal? Is that making him, is that awkward? That was a class, that was a class. We're gonna find a picture, we're gonna have more. Look at all of them. Lead foot bill. The voice. Voice with the red dog. Uh, that's only kilometers an hour, people. <laughs> Smack talk viewers, don't get excited. It's only kilometers an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, so can I interest you in a dog treat? No, no, no. In a dog, dog. treat? Yeah, there you go. So, do, you, do you want a dog treat? Yeah. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> the whole thing. Okay, Bobby, can I interest you in a dog treat? <laughs> oh, no, fucking no voice. No. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs>
So I'm, I'm going to start the sentence. You can complete it. If I were to drink six bottles of piss. You'd be well and truly fucked. No, you. I'll be well and truly fucked. <laughs> Next. Next. <clears throat> Rubbing alcohol. After a day at the field, my helicopter, my nitro gets quite dirty and I have to spray it down with some rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Jesus. Isopropyl. But isopropyl. Well, first of all, I don't rub me heli. There's something else you rub. But the thing here is, is yeah, I, I fly electric, so it's not really a problem. I'll see talk with Alex. R round of applause here. Round of applause here. Grab the fucking hand then, hey. Yeah, Fuck I didn't want to hurt you. Business, your back's hurt, and I don't want to hurt your hand. You won't because be your hand's been hurt. Your hand's been busy. This this works hard, mate. Most times. Does it? it still does. It still works, mate. <laughs> He's reaching for it. Reach for it, mate. Good morning, sunshine. The fuck you want? <laughs> He's a servant. Oh, yeah. I, 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 fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Tom, Tom, fuck there's, me, there's, hey. Tom, there's good Jesus. surfing here. Seriously. He's oh, some awesome surfing. Yeah, apparently, you, uh, you like surfing, eh? I'd love to see you serve, mate. I'll be shitting my shorts, fucking laughing, watching you. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hey, Mike. <laughs> so, uh, dear Doc Wing. Oh. Dear Doc Wing, my name's Alex from Australia, down under. <laughs> this is fucked, mate. Come on, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, dear Doug Wing, my, my, name, my name's Alex from down under, Australia. <laughs> We actually talked on the phone briefly. WA, <laughs> WA yeah, West Australia, yeah, yeah, that's right. We actually briefly talked on the phone. Ah, oh, fuck me. Jesus. Okay, day three. D what the fuck was you called? Dear Doc, yeah, yeah. D D <laughs> Isn't this part, so that's part of the question then, sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whatever, yeah, okay. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> Fuck me. Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> yeah, d dear Doc. Flappy. Whatever. Right? I'm, uh. Nah, this is fucked. I can't do it. Nah, no, no, fuck. <clears throat> okay, Doc John. You're looking shocking, I can tell you, man. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hear anyway, um, I hear that, um, nah. <laughs> Can I interest you in a sheep treat? 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 Sheep <laughs> Dude, it's oh, the little got, guy. Yours has got a lot of. Uh, Look at the little guy. Yours has got a lot of. Oh, he hid in the pouch. He disappeared. <laughs>